This is the internet on a Commodore 64. Sort of. Hi, I'm Matt D'Amico, and welcome to episode 4 of Retro Bits. In today's bit, we take a look at browsing the internet using the OldNet BBS. The OldNet is a Telnet accessible bulletin board system designed for the Commodore 64 that lets you browse web pages using your 40 column Petsky terminal. In order to connect, you will need one of many available serial to network bridge devices, such as a user port Wi Fi modem, a serial adapter connected to a PC running the TCP SIR software, or a network interface adapter. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using a replica CMD Turbo 232 expansion port interface and a Y Modem 232 for maximum performance. Additionally, I'll be using CCGMS Term, one of the best modern terminal emulators available for calling 40 column Commodore graphics boards. It supports both the user port 9600 baud hack as well as high speed SwiftLink and Turbo 232 interfaces and can run from a single program file outside of an emulated disk image. This will be important in a minute. Here we are at the main page of the old net BBS. Like boards of the past, the site features a variety of different sections you can access, including games, chat, email, a Telnet BBS list, downloads, and art gallery. In the news section, you can read current stories from some hand-picked sites such as Wired and the Vintage Computer Federation. One of the clever features of the site is an internet browser. Here, you can enter any URL you'd like, and the BBS will retrieve the site and format it for your Commodore terminal. However, there is a twist. Instead of displaying the modern internet, the old net reaches into the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine and retrieves a vintage copy of the page you requested. While it's not particularly useful, it is fun to dredge up some history while using a pre-internet era computer. Now, the most useful part of the old net BBS is the ability to search and download software from several of the largest online Commodore archives, including both vintage and current releases. Here in 2020, there are dozens of new releases every week, including art, music, demos, games, and applications. In addition, there are several major new game titles released every month. It really is an amazing time to be into the Commodore 64 scene, as there has been a huge resurgence in interest and development for the platform as the retro scene gains more and more steam. With this feature of the old net, you can easily download nearly 200,000 of the latest releases and vintage titles directly to your Commodore instead of constantly transporting your thumb drive or SD card to a PC to transfer software. With the setup I described earlier, downloading a D64 disk image is surprisingly quick. As I mentioned earlier, CCGMS can run outside of a disk image. Because of that, I can use this SD2 IEC device by itself to both run the terminal and download a D64 image file directly to the SD card's FAT file system. Speaking of the SD2 IEC, there are many features that I really love about the device and I plan on covering them in a dedicated video in the future. Likewise, I intend to do future bits on the pros and cons of similar mass storage devices, including the Pi 1541, the Ultimate 2 Plus, and maybe the new Backbit. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing comparisons of these products. In testing, I've determined that the maximum throughput of an unaccelerated Commodore 64 is achieved when using a port speed of 19,200 baud with this hardware setup and when downloading directly to a RAM disk. Increasing the port speed to 38.4K or higher does not result in higher throughput. In fact, it goes down, possibly due to increased flow control. I've similarly tested Commodore 128 and it sees speed increases right up through 57.6K and can download an entire D64 image in 65 seconds flat. Once the download completes, we can immediately mount the disk image directly from inside the directory on the SD card's file system. No messing around with compression, reconstructing links files, swapping disks, or any of the inconveniences of the old days. After that, it's just load and go.
So there we go, hot off the internet running brand new software on the 64, no PC required at all. The past really is the future, or is it the other way around? I hope you enjoyed this bit. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Retro Bits.